Amnath, founder and CEO, U2K Consulting, a mentor and a coach and author of the book, Business is All About Money. Joining him on the panel, Dr. Ganesh Natarajan, founder 5F World, a platform dedicated to investment and mentoring of startups, skills, platforms and social enterprises. He is chairman of Honeywell Automation India Limited and the Lighthouse Communities Foundation and co-founder of Global Talent Track and Zoom Advisors. So you may take your seats, please. He is also an independent director at SBI and Honeywell Automation India Limited. Also put your hands together for Mahesh Ramamurthy, Chief Information Officer, Yes Bank. Mahesh comes with three decades of experience in the BFSI technology space in payments and banking technology, product design, business solution and project management across India and MNC banks and technology firms. Gentlemen, all yours. Do you have the microphones? Are there three of them there? Yeah, you just need to press the button. Uh, good morning, independent directors, aspiring directors, and everyone in the room. Uh, welcome to this discussion on uh, digitally fit, future fit board. Uh, the objective of this discussion is to uh, explore and define what digitally future fit board means, uh, how to measure their performance, and how to achieve multiple X growth through digital transformation and adequate risk and cybersecurity management as well. So we are lucky to have Dr. Ganesh Natarajan and uh, Mahesh Ramurthy with us. And let me, before we jump straight into the subject, as they say, the IPL has just uh, passed by. Uh, and before we go into the playing ground and start playing, let's analyze the, the conditions and the pitch before we get into it. So let me request Ganesh to set the tone and share his view on the current digital world and what the future looks like. And uh, has COVID and the new digital innovations triggered a new digital revolution impacting the way the business is done? All yours, Ganesh. Thank you very much and uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I must say that, you know, there's too much hype about digital. And being a digital consultant and uh, digital transformation so-called expert, I'm probably shooting myself in the foot. But I think the over-reliance of technology and the, I mean, the recent hype is on what you must be hearing about chat GPT and generative AI. And looking at WhatsApp, you would think that the future of the world is dead. Only machines will run the planet and you can go back to all the science fiction movies that you can look at. The reality is, and I'll come to that a little later, but the reality is that we have to be very balanced. I mean, to go to your IPL analogy, you're not going to get a Ravindra Jadeja coming and hitting a 6 and a 4 in the last, it's not going to happen. Neither is chat GPT going to do that for you. So I was delighted to what Mr. Tyagi said, because I think what he's talking about is a mature way of looking at any transformation and how do you make that change happen? I mean, I'll just share one anecdote with you. I mean, I did two uh, CEO stints in public limited companies, Aptec for 10 years, and then a company called Zensa Technologies for 15 years. And I'm, I've been committed to this whole concept of ESG even in 2002. So I still remember in my first discussion with CNBC and the analysts at the stock exchange, I said, I'm going to run this company through PPP, which is profit, people and planet. There were people telling me that, look, I mean, your company hadn't paid a dividend for 30 years. It's a, it was listed already for 35 years. Can we please focus only on profits, please? I said, you give me five years, I will prove to you that an equal focus on people and planet will actually generate more profits. And fortunately, the future proved me right. The reason I'm saying this is, I mean, it is extremely important to say that, look, ultimately companies will be run through, in my opinion, four things. Okay? The first is outstanding processes. Is your manufacturing process, your service process, your overall processes, are they world class? Are they relevant for the current market condition? The second is technology. Because without enabling technology, we are wasting an opportunity. But technology has to be subservient to your design of the strategy and the business process of the firm. Because if you put technology first and say everybody will run around after that technology, which is what happened in the early days of digital, nothing is going to happen. The third, which is becoming very important nowadays, is clearly data. And we've all heard about data warehouses and data marts and what have you, but data in as much as it becomes, I mean, my PhD is on knowledge management. So we all know that data by itself is useless. So data 
contextualized becomes information and information with experience becomes knowledge so are we bringing to board either through independent directors or through promoters or whatever all the discussion that happened in the last one hour are we ensuring that we have an ability to predict the future to whatever extent and an ability to prescribe the future unfortunately today people like amazon is prescribing the future so well that you start believing their future okay so you also have to have a balanced view on what could be the future but listen to all the inputs so i think that's the point i'm making and last but not the least the outstanding leadership ids have to play a role in the overall board leadership process i mean i've been delighted in my two large boards honeywell automation and state bank of india to see the extent of collaboration extent of governance that happens by sheer good discussions at the board and culture because without an enabling culture i mean we used to talk about it in the old days of technology where we said sooner or later the world will be struggling with fifth generation technology third generation processes and first generation people because people don't change that fast okay so the point i'm making is that your your success will be limited by the weakest of these four and if i repeat business process technology data and analytics and culture so if you think about it from that point of view you get a holistic picture now you add to that governance which kind of fits in somewhere there add to that our responsibility to sh- to all stakeholders including society including internal stakeholders like customers etc then you will come to the fifth point that i'm seeing on digital nowadays that truly successful companies are those who realize that look first we got to get our house in order and that's why i said don't go buy the best technology because that's not going to help you but and also then very strategically systematically start designing what is called journeys that for the millennial who's 22 years old who comes to who doesn't come to a state bank branch and for my mother in law who's 92 years old who wants to go to the nearest branch every month and print her passbook god knows for what but she wants to do it now you can't come in her way i'm saying sorry online you know is there you only need one sorry my mother in law will go to the kalyani nagar bank branch and ask for her passbook and if you say the passbook printer is not working and all sorry you have a dissatisfied customer so her journey as a customer is less digital but served by digital my daughter's journey in new york where she never wants to see a sales person her whole life is entirely digital so you can't be a company which says oh sorry i only serve this category of customer so i'm saying large people will have to add that fifth dimension which is designing multiple journeys for multiple categories of customer and you do the, all that then my belief is that digital will really take off and we can talk about it as we go along apart from what you said which kind of completely moderate, moderate. uh completely kind of aligns to uh you know what do you think about in all the aspects about the product i mean you talked about people you talked about culture digital data India hasn't produced the apples and the googles they definitely we, we, can we come back to that we will derail the whole discussion okay so my point is your product or services is what one assumes you have i mean if you don't have a product or service what are you doing anyway okay but having got a product or service how do we take that forward yeah so uh, ganesh can you hear me now yeah so uh, ganesh is a person who thinks writes talks and lives digital and from him to you know talk about the five f's and he, and in the five f's he has included fun as a, as well the company that he represents with and, and as he rightly said he approaches uh, the entire digital with a human centric approach uh, we'll come to that more of it a little later but the way the technology is affecting business today i think mahesh is is at the center of it as the cio of yes bank uh, which is actually a digital bank and i'm going to ask him and uh, ganesh did mention about chat gpt and so many other things that are there there's a technology revolution which is taking place almost every day something or the other is coming and uh, uh, mahesh if you were to pick up say three technologies which is going to affect business uh, what are the challenges uh, that uh, the board and the independent directors have to face thank you uh, and thank you for having me over here i think really appreciate it and possibly i will i will try and articulate it more from a practitioner's view given that i'm deep into the execution phase of how i take a business strategy into an execution mode while also possibly enabling the board uh, to view us in the right way uh, and educate them through i think couple of areas that i do believe from a uh, 
from a real transformation that's really hitting us today is the advent of, uh, I would say, data first. I'll put data. Ganesh did mention about it. Uh, data today, you know, we've always had data. It's not that data ever existed, for, never existed, it was always there. I think it is, uh, it is making the intelligence of the data, uh, which is not just about what you source and information, but how you use that information from, at multiple levels of interaction. Uh, that's, going to be, uh, that's going to be very, very important. And that's going to differentiate any organization or the board uh, from, you know, from being a good to a, to a great. I think that's going to be very important. And you can operate the data like from a bits and bytes to the information that it creates to the knowledge and the intelligence, correct? That's the different building blocks in my mind. But how you build those building blocks and how you, how you enable those building blocks uh, to be fairly measured uh, is going to be very, very important. So to me, I think whether you talk about data warehouse, whether you talk of reporting, whether you talk of metrics, Everything at the end of the day is underpinning data and the use of the data to uh, transform or to enable the right information being presented and to also measure your own risk. Because that's very critical. At the end of the day, uh, today data will tell you whether you are performing good or bad, what is the kind of risk appetite that you have uh, and how is, how is your environment moving, ecosystem moving across. So to me, data, uh, people talk about, a lot, lot of me-toos are happening across, whether it is in terms of data lake or you talk of enterprise data warehouse, and now there are new terminologies coming all over the place. But a lot of organizations uh, at an execution level, management level, and at the board level, uh, do not take a step back to understand what they want from the data. So that's very critical. I think the need for us to take a step back and look at that and then build it out in a way that it, it presents a perspective in the right way or the or call out the risks is very critical. Uh, technologies today are a diamond dozen available. Uh, now that's only a toolkit, but the human intelligence has to again emphasize the human intelligence of trying to set out what you want to measure, to set out how you want to see it and to set out how you really are going to get into the market or your customer is going to be defined by that. So data is one part. The other part is your is your entire knowledge about using new technologies uh, to understand how you bring them in. And so to talk about chat GPT, right? So I'll just mention uh, two years ago, there was a lot of fluff around metaverse, right? Possibly every, there was every possible seminar or anything that you talked about was metaverse. Right? Suddenly that has died down. Now, and, you, and we saw organizations, boards, everyone saying, can we get into that? Can we get into this? Can we do that? Uh, but the viability of doing such a thing and the applicability of it has not really taken off. So that's a technology that possibly were not easily accepted for multiple reasons. It was good in some spaces, not good in the other spaces. However, chat GPT uh, to me is a very interesting concept as of now. It's a very interesting concept. Uh, it's, it's taking off well, but we need to be at the end of the day careful about saying, what do you use it for? Uh, it can be very dangerous. Uh, it can be very proliferating into your organization's ethos itself and can pose a massive security risk. For a bank, for example, I think as if you open up a chat GPT without the right control frameworks, now you could have your source code sitting somewhere up there and you are knows who's going to because your software program will try to debug a piece of code, put it up there to check if it works and hey, you have it up there. So there is and then you can ask questions to it. You can have but these are offline which are not connected. So you need to know the balance of what you do. Could you use some of these technologies to bring better customer service? I think it requires a far more deeper discussion, but I do believe that usage of AI, the usage of AI, as I say, into your journeys, as Sir called out, is going to be a very key differentiator. For banking especially, uh, I could say any financial institutions, 
the ability of bringing ai uh, with intelligence of a human understanding managing the risk and managing the ask from a business perspective where you want to be and bringing ai into the center stage of how you weave it into your your delivery mechanisms so journey mechanisms is going to be very key today again i can talk of ai that you know, there are so many use cases in the market so many use cases but when you bring in such technologies the default answer is is it going to drive growth is it going to manage risk is it an roi based approach so you know uh, you will now now need to again sit down and discuss as to and calibrate as to what do you want to do with it and now you cannot bring in a new technology and suddenly say show me an roi for it now the, the outside in view will be yeah we'll use this technology can i grow my business by 5x um and the tech guy sitting on the back end will say no he'll shake his head thinking there is good because that's the only way he's going to table around it uh, but then then the risk guy will not even be ready for it because for them it is about a shift a left shift a shift left in my view about how they are looking at risk and banking is a classic example of it right you had payments which were offline upi came upi came and revolutionized it and now you suddenly are seeing that payment just fly off you now by the time you realize and if you don't have an risk in in line to your transaction it's crores of rupees that fly off crores of rupees so to me about using ai in your risk management process you using ai in your customer experiences process using ai in your product pricing process or using ai to create better uh i would say board related kpi management to say that listen you performed abc uh these are performing kpi performances the management is going towards how if i were to simulate using certain uh, i would say algorithms around it can i get better this thing how do you get it i think these are some brilliant use cases that ai can then genuinely bring to the table so we i think banks are starting to look at that now we are always n minus 2 I, uh, banks will never be n n will always be n minus 2 uh, and today interestingly to that point i must say that regulators are also being are also being very advanced in, in their expectations uh, they are they are probably starting to realize that if it, they do not push the ecosystem uh, to get more in line with the advancement of technology uh you're going to have a problem and there is going to be a systemic risk that is going to come through out, out of it so truly if i were to go back step back and look at what regulators are asking they are building brilliant databases within their ecosystem there where they are able to simulate a lot of conditions now i've been in talk conversations with a lot of the folks and it is very interesting to understand how they look at peer banks how they look at your data that you submit how they look at your performances and from a regulatory perspective how can they preempt a few things they are still behind how can they preempt a few areas i think that's some brilliance that is from a regulation perspective that they are looking at and the collaboration associated with it so to me i think data and ai are two aspects that to me will change a lot of the the interlinkages and the game plans the third area which i'll just touch upon is how do you present this um into the front end and make it more viable with the right cyber security related areas it may not be one technology uh, but at the end of the day a lot of us are happy using a mobile a lot of us are happy accessing different forms of data uh, but uh, i would say that slightly different topic but to also say that understanding the cyber security impact to individuals uh, and making it more simple for someone to understand is going to be very 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 key for success and uh, it's a very vast topic but to me to very specifically if you look at only at customer service you know like sir mentioned about his uh, his mother versus his daughter now both of them uh, use mobile both of them use mobile very differently for different uses like for example mom my mother has learned possibly uh, mobile with the hard way but her ability to now be succumbing to a quick any kind of phishing attacks are very high 
so to be able to provide certain technologies which are emerging to protect them is going to be very very key and to me i think uh, the ability of any of our from a tech world to be in line with any of these transactions at a personal life to protect uh, that's going to be very key and that's emerging today i can see some very good utilities coming up uh, which we don't use it in our daily life but uh, adding them into our ecosystem to manage ourselves is going to be very critical so the three areas is what i would look at broadly yeah so and, and that's where the whole issue lies i mean everybody realizes and especially at the sme levels data is the new oil and that you need to manage data but at the same time the technologies are developing so very fast there is uh, you know from the board's perspective one is they are perplexed at all the new technologies which are coming in so the solution uncertainty is there the need uncertainty is also there so how to balance these two and with all the uh, expensive technologies as well in terms of funding in terms of uh, you know how much money to put into digital transformation uh, how does the board grapple with all these situations and what do you think is uh, a digitally future fit board what constitute that and uh, how do you sort of allocate funds how do you find out where we should be in digital terms especially when you have to cater to such a large audience and you mentioned from the age of say 18 or 19 when they start earning till you know uh, an old person like uh, our mothers and parents 80 92 years old how do you manage all these in this digital world ganesh do you like to take it first no i think it's an important question and obviously there are very talented people i mean just to give you the example of state bank for instance i mean today we have uh, like all banks have a rotational three year term so we have a dmd of techno information technology who is on a three year term but we have a chief information officer a chief information security officer a chief technology officer who are all on five year contracts the best in the business and in fact the chief digital officer of the bank he himself has been a ceo earlier running very strong digital capabilities so i think outstanding teams so in that context what can somebody like me who chairs the digital it strategy committee of the bank what can we contribute not come in their way and get into transactions and tell them how to deal with ibm or tcs or some other big guys who are playing in the in the in the in the, in the, in the sandbox but really to say exactly what you said which is to link it to what are the current and future outcomes that customers will expect so the the the, the joy of being in a large board managed entity is that you serve on whether it's the audit committee or the risk committee which are important uh, people to i mean to ensure that what what he mentioned what mahesh mentioned will not happen but also important customer service committee where you're listening to the voice of the customer literally on a monthly basis and integrating that with the the discussions or the presentations that people will do i mean he talked about technology today if you look at digital which is the purpose of this thing i think we have to realize that everybody and everybody and if you haven't you better do it has implemented what we call the smack stack which is social media mobility analytics and cloud so that's there i mean in lesser or bigger parts where you are really going to get the benefit of digital is what we call edge technologies so in manufacturing it would be internet of things and automation etc in services is robotic process automation and the top layer of course is now what is emerging which is metaverse as you mentioned and uh, ai and ai has been around forever i mean we we've talked about ai but we have not deployed it in a way that i mentioned earlier to be able to predict customer response and prescribe things that will happen so that i mentioned that earlier so if you take that as a given as a kind of the lens through which you look at what is coming through don't get enamored by the latest and the greatest technologies but you are integrating all the time i think that is the responsibility of a digitally future fit board there must be at least i mean definitely the executive directors on the board and in state bank they have very very savvy chairman and four managing directors so the independent director's role is to weave that talk technology together the board discussion in terms of what is bubbling up from the management team what is discussed at the board level the both the compulsion and the suggestions that come from reserve bank of india or sebi in, in case of financial institutions i think that's amazing i mean just uh, 10 days back we were in delhi meeting mr shakti kanta das and the entire rbi team and i think which was i think now now the, now there on the website and rbi governor talked about the 10 rules of governance and much of those rules 
is what I talked about. Okay, it is linked to integrating, linked to customer, linking to succession planning, and linking to a culture in the organization. And that's true whether it is for a large privately owned company or an SME, or of course a, a, a kind of a um, promoter driven company, or entities like Honeywell and State Bank, which I mentioned before. All these have to look at these as important responsibilities. So to add, to to one line answer to your question is a future fit board will understand issues like data privacy. I mean, today we've all heard about GDPR and the, I mean, it's almost impossible in Europe to share customer data without consent. And now even consent is seen as not adequate because you're saying, do you take consent when the man was in a bar after five drinks? Then it's not consent. So how do you prove that when you took consent, the person was in a fully uninhibited state of mind? So these issues are laughable today because it's happening in Europe. The data privacy bill will come through in parliament. We've seen the first draft of the bill, but you will find that a lot of things you take for granted. For instance, every person above the age of 70 happily gives their banking password to their driver or their servant saying, Aap ja ke karke le ke. okay, such things will almost be criminal. Okay. And where does the crime pass? Exactly what you what he said that look, we have to build safeguards to ensure that the senior citizen is still secure in spite of these somewhat idiotic practices. I mean, I, I'm guilty myself. I have I use the same password for almost everything because at the age of 65, who's going to remember 17 different passwords? Okay. And then if you put it on your mobile phone, anyway, that's violating security because some hacker can pull it out. So you have all these, I mean, this is data privacy, which is more preventive. But then if you look at corrective, you know, the whole cyber security and the, the hackers that are coming at us from all over the world, they're saying that the next Third World War will be fought entirely electronically. We saw it in Kuwait, if you remember, hardly anybody from the US Army stepped into Kuwait, but they still managed to do a great job. But the same thing will happen that, you know, the attackers will come through cyber, the defenders will have to be extremely capable. And if you remember in the 60s, they used to talk about every time somebody, somebody invites better armor, there'll always be somebody who discovers a better gun. And this battle will keep going. And I think the responsibility of the board is to stay savvy. Because when your board directors is who say, Jab mein chota bacha tha, this used to happen, sorry. The chota bacha day time is gone. You have to completely stay relevant all the time. And just one last thing on chat GPT. You know, I'm actually writing my 13th book, which is my first novel. And I'm very excited about it. So my heroine actually goes to Switzerland, goes to Europe. And she wants to do this quick tour of 10 countries. Now, I've been to most of the countries, but I was feeling lazy one evening. So I told chat GPT, okay, give me information on the following 10 countries. All I get is the immigration laws of all those countries. Exactly what Mahesh said. That if you don't ask the right question, you will always get the wrong answer. So to summarize, I'm saying boards must be like the intelligent chat GPT. They must know how to ask the right questions. Because otherwise the savvy management team will always give you the right answer, but the wrong question. So what are you benefiting from that? And that's where I think technology can really help us. Uh, Mahesh, um, since you are on the operation side as well, uh, how does uh, companies allocate funds uh, for all these uh, digital uh, needs? So maybe there is a core uh, which you need to spend on normal accounting, finance, uh, insurance, etc. Then there might be something which you need to spend on customer interfaces, etc. And the third is on the new technology. So is there some sort of a broad parameter that you would look at? Or, and especially from a SME point of view, would you have anything to say on that? So, I think the, the way we look at it is every time we do our budgeting exercise, it's about really sitting, taking a step back and looking at where the business wants to go itself. Where is the business's, business of the bank looks like uh, and where it is for the next three years. Uh, and basis of which we really start to look at inside out and outside in. Both we have to look at. And when I look at inside out, it is about saying what is the digitization what is the operational efficiencies that we can bring? Uh, what are some of the areas where you need to uh, you know, replace or modernize, so whichever way you may call it. Uh, and outside in is about bringing innovation. It's about saying what is that technology that you can get to revolutionize or change? And what is it that is the industry is looking at, not just India but across and its applicability to the context of where we are operating. And last but not the least about if you, when you do all of this, there are three other factors that we definitely play out is what is the kind of security framework that we need to keep enhancing. Now, very, very key. 
and what is the kind of a compliance and regulatory approach that you need to take because it's very important for us to not just look at it as an overhead but to look at it as an assurance uh, because what a regulator or anyone looks at from an entity a regulated entity like a bank is assurance they are not looking at you to, to get into your operating environment they are looking at assurance that you know what you're doing is right and you are in alignment with what we expect that's a very fundamental shift of how you look at it so if you were to look measure all of this we essentially build our entire capability arts budget uh, which is a short term a medium term with one year a long term which is three years essentially to try and dissect it across different dimensions which is in some what you need to keep the lights on uh, what you need to keep growing your business at a pace which is at 10 20% kegar and then what you really need to do is transform the bank in terms of saying if i do this i'm going to be going to be able to drive it at an additional 20% but what is also we keep a budget which essentially is for innovation uh, we do that innovation could be something that possibly we have about 5 6% of our budgets going into innovation from a tech and operational perspective uh, because that's going to be very critical it could be uh, right, uh, 50% of it could be right off but what's important to say that how can we really bring that innovation into your mainstream test it fail fast move forward fail accept move forward so that's an innovation approach that we've really taken uh, and what we really do is now uh, it's still early stages but we one of the things that we look at is to create no longer siloed approach of delivery now business comes and tells i need one give me a b c d the tech guy takes it and says i'll stitch it up for you and give it to you right now we've changed that game a bit and which is working well for us is to say all teams are going to be i mean in tech we call it agile teams but actually cohorts which really come together and they are empowered my uh, to be able to deliver the outcome uh, and when and then they become owners of it effectively they are they create a product they create they just don't create a service they create an entire product understand how the business is going to be there understand how they're going to weave it into a distribution channel i think that's a fair bit of work that we done so when I, when you step back and look at how you create budgets and look at the metrics then once we have our budgets then the execution of it is very very tightly monitored from a metrics perspective and these metrics are not just management metrics that we look at it it's also presented in like sir said on the strategy committee of the board uh, to say what have we done against these areas for example you may say that my infosec i have i've deployed 100 180 crores of equipment it's not about deployment you can buy the best of software or the, or the medium software but it's about how we utilize it in the right context and you're seeing the effectiveness of it how do you really show that as a kpi up into the board so we do do all of that and that's what today uh, we measure ourselves against that as a management kpis and then how do we bubble up in terms of saying showing it to the board uh, that's how we really going towards i think that's a very uh, differentiated approach that we're taking early stages but do believe that enabling that is going to be effectively helping the board become ready for managing uh, Uh, to oversee what's happening across in a much more better way the fine grained way if i may say it uh, last but not the least one of the thing to add to what server staying what you were talking in the previous point is about one of the mandatory things we do not just regulated but also otherwise is all board members are and sir would have gone through it also go through an exhaustive uh, cyber security uh, i would say program Uh, and that program essentially is not just reading up a few things but many of the directors we've helped them through the course to understand what it means because that understanding is also going to help them better equip be better equipped as they come into a uh, review process or the overall understanding is to say hey if this happens what's happening uh, do you have is it the right metric that we're measuring is the right data points coming in what's happening there So I think a lot of these things are starting to change, which we probably didn't see it 10 years before or 11 years before. But that's, I would say, to create that framework from a digital fit board, uh, not just about giving an iPad or a technology out there. It is about making the data talk and about putting the right cyber security and the culture to you, and the making sure that the the man the board 
is essentially aware of how to look at that and make interpret it in the right way to also help feed back into the management. I think that's the way I would look at it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Cyber security is not just an IT risk today, it's an enterprise risk. And um, uh, you, both of you also mentioned that while digital can be at the top, the underlying technology, underlying processes and the people, uh, they have to be also managed. So let's talk something about uh, how to bring about a digital culture in the organization. And uh, also at the board level, uh, what are the things that the board needs to look at, management needs to look at, and uh, how to build that buy-in for all these uh, change management which is required uh, when you do a digital transformation. Ganesh? No, I think the answer is quite simple. I mean, we talked about board sensitization and we need at least 40% of the board to be very savvy, not in the technology, but in terms of the outcomes that we expect from the technology, which is the point I was making earlier. The second is, I think you have to understand that digital success is going to happen when people at all levels feel empowered. So it's not like a top-down approach where the, where the CIO or the, C, or, the C, or the CTO saying this is what shall be done in the organization. So we've done lots of exercises in, in very large manufacturing and services companies where we've actually identified maybe 400 digital champions from within the organization and they become part of the digital vision community. And we give them a little budget, we give them people, we give them access to the CIO's office and the technology and say, now you guys are maybe dealing with employees, dealing with supply chain, dealing with customers. You come up with what fancy solutions you really want. And we found that to be extremely useful because then it is customer, it is actually employee-led rather than top-down. And that's something that we're trying to implement. The other point that Mayesh mentioned, which is very, very important, this whole innovation piece. I mean, I remember I was a digital advisor to the Bajaj FinServe group, which is the today one of the most successful NBFCs. And that was, that is an amazing entity. Mr. Sanjeev Bajaj, who founded, I mean, who's the um, chairman and founder and this thing. Mr. Nanu Pamnani, who's a very well-known city banker, who was the chairman of the board five years back when I was doing this. I mean, we were totally open to anybody from anywhere in the world being part of our sandbox or the innovation ecosystem. And I remember we used to get onto Sanjeev's plane and go right from Tel Aviv to Singapore to Hong Kong to wherever innovation was, we'd go and look at it. Imagine seven people, including the three company CEOs, Mr. Bajaj, Mr. Pamnani, me, a couple of others, all spending 10 days just looking at innovation ideas. And the, the promise was that it doesn't matter where you are, we'll give you the opportunity to come play with us and make that happen. And the same thing we're now implementing in SBI. Any fintech who wants to be part of the SBI ecosystem can actually come in, meet the, meet the fintech evaluation team and become part of the ecosystem. A lot of people will just come and say, I can do this, I can do that. But it's you know, fully evaluated and validated and make that happen. So if you do that, you will find that the digital culture not only is uh, go, percolates top down, but actually springs up bottom up. And the bottom up could be not just employees, but as I said, even the startup who is part of your ecosystem. If you do that, over a period of two, three years, you'll find that this really, really flowering, you know, because the, everybody's talking about it. Customers are excited about what they see. And I think that's the opportunity you should look at. Um, Mahesh, I think, um, you know, one of the things which most people fear about uh, digital is that there are a lot of jargons and there are a lot of uh, acronyms which are used. So as, um, as a CIO, uh, how do you put across in a, in a language which is understandable to the board, to the people, and uh, to the customers as to what is uh, digital transformation all about? It's a, it's a very loaded question that you're putting <laughs> out, but I'll still try and... So what's, what effectively we do is you know, the digital, as, as Ganesh sir had talked about in the start itself, it's a bit overhyped. Right? And a bit overhyped. So digital, digitization, I think banks have been doing it for, institutions have been doing it for a while. Uh, what actually has changed is how we be going to be able to use technology to help businesses or back offices or customer service or risk teams uh, or operations teams to be able to do better and do faster do better, do it more securely. Uh, so the concept of digital in the front end experiences 
uh, versus the ability for you to digitize and create better risk perspectives is going to be very critical. But all of this, when we end up picking up a particular project or a program, whichever you may call it, one of the a few key evaluation parameters that we really go through is, what does it really impact to the organization? Let's be honest about it, what does it do? So the business case document in the past used to be just an ROI based approach. Uh, but that's not going to be essentially just one parameter. What is it going to do from an individual's existence perspective? You know, can he say that he can, can it be directly managed by the customer or prospect? Uh, can it help unify a lot of the data coming into the front end? And then can he do the same thing faster? In which case the service is better or he is able to do more for the same. And then measure the effectiveness of it. Say that so we commit as a team. So it is no longer just a tech team who commits to that. It is a tech plus ops plus business, a bunch of team members who come together and saying this is how we are going to do this. Uh, this program, this is the outcomes that we are going to drive. And more importantly, commit to that outcomes when you go into the board is to say, you know, we are going to put in some 20 crores, 30 crores funding or 50 crores. But what is going to be really helpful is, what is it going to do for the bank? And how are we going to measure ourselves uh, that you will see a difference uh, from, uh, from a performance perspective or from an efficiency perspective uh, is going to be very critical. So a lot of the time, the debate is not about the technology. Because, like I said, that, that is best left to the experts. Uh, now we have enough and more people who will say this is good, that's bad. So that's left to the experts. What is it that that, that capability is going to bring to the organization or to the customer? Because at the end of all of this, for us, customer is at the center of it. You can do what you like, but if the customer says it's not worth for me or my employee says, it's not worth it, you've defeated it. Now, I'll give you a classic instance. Now, we went and put some serious money behind a particular product. We invested a few crores and uh, we said, this is going to help our onboarding by two, five minutes. We were at some one hour, we said, we'll make it five minutes. Great. So, we extended it after everything. We told the board A, B, C, D and we said, in six months time, we're going to come back and show you that how we are able to do, say, 4x of this. Uh, onboarding capability. When we extended it, uh, we saw a lot of reservations from people. Uh, and then we, when we went down and we realized that the people on the ground who were actually using said, I don't need it. Why are you giving me all this? I just, you need 10 fields, you give me 10 fields, too. I'll do it that work. You need me to talk to the customer, I'll talk to the customer. You need me help capture that interaction rather than you building something that is so beautifully the latest technology, which is not helping. You elevate my manual process in a way that I can use the system much more simply, better and easily. That's all they were asking for and we were trying to build a possibly a different view. So I think at the end of the day, technology interleaved with a business process and measuring the outcomes is going to be success. And it has to be measured and, and when we present to the board now is all about not just the tech, it is about measuring what value you have brought to the story. What is the value proposition? Have you met it? Have you not met it? Why? What happens? What lessons are we learning from it that we will not commit the same harakiri again? And how are you going to improve from there? So these are some interesting conversations that happen and that's how we are saying that it's more of a joint proposition that has helped us bridge some of the gap. And the board is also getting savvy about saying that, hey, you know what, uh, we are not getting operation. We are only seeing how these, how the bank's management is actually working towards together to make it, to give us an, drive us an outcome. And I think that's been successful. We started on that journey. Hopefully we can, I would say, make it much more robust is what I would call it. Yeah, so true. I think ultimately it's the customer experience which uh, uh, is the proof of the pudding. Uh, coming now to uh, individual directors. Um, so you have been on the board of many uh, companies. How does an independent director prepare 
for board meetings where digital uh, matters are being discussed. Any, any tips, any? Uh, See, the, there are two, two ways of looking at this. One is if you have competent people on the board and the management, then you try and assimilate because there's no way you can fake it. I mean, you can't say that, look, I don't know anything about digital, but I'll go read up a couple of things and ask stupid questions. Okay, I think it's a waste of management time. It's a waste of the rest of the board time. So, for instance, in all our boards, we're very clear on what our expertise is. I mean, State Bank Board, I mean, Mr. Vikramsi's brother, Ketan, runs our audit committee, and he's fantastic at what he does. Okay. Similarly, we have an outstanding IIT, IIM gentleman who runs risk. I run digital and IT. So, we all respect each other for our, relative, for our respective areas of competence, and we're learning from each other all the time. So, I'm just saying to prepare for a topic that you don't know anything about. Mr. Tyagi very rightly said, you better know how to read a balance sheet. So that is the, probably the bare minimum one would expect from an independent director. Now, I still remember when I was CEO of Zensar for, uh, for after eight years, uh, my, my board chair, Mr. Harsh Goenka asked me, would you like to go and spend 10 weeks in Harvard Business School and do the advanced management program? Now, by that time, your ego is so high, you say, come on, what can Harvard Business School teach me now? Okay, so I said, finally, reluctantly decided to go because all CEOs go at some point of time. So it's probably to keep us out of the way for some time to see how the rest of the management performs. And I remember lining up in Harvard Business School and the, the, current, uh, the current gentleman who was the dean, Shrikant Data. Shrikant came and told us the first seven, five, five days is going to be an accounting boot camp. So there were like 140 of us, CEOs from 42 countries, including the chairman of the Hungarian Stock Exchange. Said, Are you serious? Accounting boot camp for us? So we almost said we'll walk out. Said, Believe me, I will show you how much you have to know to how little you know how little you know. That was uh, Shrikan. And Shrikan, by the way, is a Bombay guy. So, at the end of those five days, we learned so much of new stuff. So, you can never stop learning that. So, we're digital. I mean, accounting, fortunately, right, Mr. Vikramsi? It doesn't change every month. But digital changes every month. Okay. So, can you be completely abreast of new technology? No. I mean, I think uh, he rightly mentioned about Metaverse, the great hype. So, we actually set out one year back and said, let's use Metaverse and show it can be done. So we actually we have a large social enterprise you know, where we get students from multiple colleges across the country to come up with their best social final year projects. And it is to be very difficult to judge it because from all over the country. So just four months back, we set up this amazing metaverse incident. And I asked Dr. Marshall Karoz, the Padma Vibhushan, very senior gentleman. I said, I want you to go and evaluate student projects. He said, no, no, I can't travel all over the country. I said, we'll give you a metaverse instance. So he actually walked in and we, of course, I mean, if any of you have used any of these virtual reality, he took an avatar for himself, an avatar of a scientist. You could be a wolf, you could be a fox, whatever. And then he walked through 75 different stalls. He could actually walk in, talk to the person sitting there who would explain the project, ask more questions. And he said, oh my God, in one and a half hours, I've done what would have taken me seven, seven days to do. I mean, you talked about the IPL analogy, for instance, if you had, if you were viewing it on metaverse, if you, how many of you like cricket? Sorry, I don't want to get too deep. Very few hands. I better be careful. Though. So, for instance, if you remember, and there are a lot of hype over I'm, I'm not, by the way, commenting on any cricketer, but I'll tell you what I read about in WhatsApp. So, somebody said, look, the bowler was bowling so well in that final over. First four balls, wonderful. Then the idiot captain goes and talks to him for 30, minutes, 30 seconds, and he makes a, he bowls an awful ball and he gets hit for six. So, the captain goes back now and talks to him for two minutes and counsels him. So he like gets totally confused and the last ball goes for four. So poor Hardik Pandya is being singularly blamed for the loss of Gujarat. Now, if you were on Metaverse, you could actually answer your own question. You could simulate three situations. Suppose Hardik Pandya is made to stand where he was and not go and talk. What will happen? Okay. Second, if if the bowler is, I mean, if the, if, the, if 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 let's say um, Ravindra Jadeja hits it to a different part of the of the place. You can simulate, and it's simulated by artificial intelligence, remember. It's not based on some guesswork. That if you've seen Ravindra Jadeja hitting seven times on the leg side, and you say, let's see what happens, he hits on the leg side. You can play your own game all by yourself. I mean, just one last example, the NBS, some of you may have National Basketball Association, the CTO is from, is from Hyderabad. So he was telling me, Krishna, that look, we're building technology that, you know, if you've seen all these seven foot, seven inches basketball players charging down the court, so we're building technology where through neural networks, we can actually prompt the guy saying that these four guys who are waiting to block your ball, if you move 30 degrees to the left, you can actually score the basket more likely than, than moving to the right. So imagine planting that in the brain as the man is charging down the court. 
and then of course ai will take over and he does not do anything he automatically his body will be maneuvered by ai now now you stop believing my story but i'm just saying <laughs> but but i'm just saying all this technology is available and i used to have a professor used to tell me that look the trick of leadership the trick of boards the trick of management is to understand how to take commonly available technology but use it uncommonly well because if you don't do that you will succumb to technology so i think the quick answer to your question is look you just have to be wise enough to learn what you need to know you have to be wise enough to know what you don't need to know there are other experts on the board who can make it happen but at the same time how do we collaborate and make it a very successful process so if you do that i think you are well prepared as an independent director not to go waste your time on too much of preparation but get the instinct in place of how can i add that